Hmm. What kind of video to make? Dead Space? No, I'm not ready to talk about that. Pokemon? No, I'll wait till Sword and Shield comes out. Mirror's Edge? Nah, that needs more polish. Hmm. Doom? No! No Doom! No id software! I talk about them too much. I can wait till Doom Eternal to talk about it again. Wait. Halo. Yeah, that works. Shut up and sit down. As I mentioned before, that game, let's call it Doom. Doom? Boom. Yeah, Boom works. Boom was a father to the FPS genre, alongside other games like Wolfenstein and Quake. But those games just started the genre, and for a while it seemed like the FPS genre was dying down, and that the innovation to it was dying down as well. Then came along a game that would modernize the genre, and in a lot of ways, has introduced mechanics that have yet to leave us. Meet Halo Combat Evolved. The term Combat Evolved is right. Halo revolutionized the FPS genre, bringing in an in-depth story with cutscenes and mid-level dialogue to flesh out your objectives. Halo created memorable characters and arguably the best and only true Microsoft mascot to date. While Sony had Kratos, Microsoft had John 117, the Master Chief. Unlike Boom, Halo put an emphasis on both gameplay and story, making massive changes to what was considered the norm in the FPS genre. For one, you can only hold two weapons at a time. No longer were you playing a walking armory with various flavors of guns to suit your needs. No, this time, you had to use what you had, and if you ran out of ammo, you would have to make do with the enemy's own weapons. As well as rechargeable health, or at least rechargeable shields, making finding health pickups not being as much of a thing as Halo's predecessors. Other games like Call of Duty, Battlefield, and games in the third-person shooter genre like Gears of War, Uncharted, Tomb Raider, would all adopt this idea of regenerating health, most of these games also instituting a weapon limit as well, with them being only able to carry two to four weapons at a time. Another point is that the enemies of Halo were unique and had characterization beyond simple bad guys like Nazis or demons. The Covenant and the Flood were unique creations, filled with several different species of aliens that had different character traits unique to them. Halo using this as a way to change how game developers looked at making enemy AI. The Grunts were timid and would cower in fear without the leadership of an elite. The Elites were the backbone of the Covenant, filled with pride, and if backed up into a corner, would react with rage, sending them into a frenzy. The Jackals would cower and move to more advantageous cover unless they felt they had the advantage in combat. The Flood had different types of creatures too. The little Floodlings would swarm and act in a hive mind pack mentality like rats. The Boomers' sole objective were to get near the player and explode to deal massive damage. In terms of story, the enemies were pretty simple in the first game. All that we knew was that they worshipped these ancient rings and wanted to wipe humanity away, while the Flood looked to just want to colonize and overtake the entire universe in a weird space zombie apocalypse. But both the Covenant and the Flood would be fleshed out more in the second game. Halo was just special. It did everything right, down to even making some of gaming's most memorable levels like the Silent Cartographer and the Pillar of Autumn. Halo even planted the seeds for what would become the revolution of multiplayer gaming on consoles, its sequel, Halo 2, taking the ideas from the first game and creating automated lobby systems that changed how multiplayer games would be set up from then on. It's easy to say that Halo's popularity has cooled off a bit, while titles like Boom are picking up steam once more. For a long time, a lot of FPS games, or even third-person shooter games, felt samey, and it could be traced back to them all having adopted the same systems that Halo introduced. I don't see anybody foaming at the mouth for the next Halo, Gears of War, Battlefield, or Call of Duty. Some of those titles come yearly, so it's not entirely the fault of the games due to title fatigue, but it is interesting to note that the most anticipated games for the coming future are not these modernized FPSs. No. Titles like Cyberpunk 2077, Super Mario Maker 2, Pokemon Sword and Shield, Boom Forever, and Borderlands 3 are the most hyped games right now. So why is that? Did Halo become too mainstream? Why is Halo 1 through 3 remembered so fondly, but 4 and 5 only have a certain crowd they appeal to? Even the off-numbered titles like Halo 3, ODST, and Reach have more love than the modern Halos, but why? I think it's because their audience grew up. 
I was 6 when I first got my hands on Halo Combat Evolved. I'm 22 now, and I can't really tell you that I'm hyped or excited all that much for the next Halo game. It's been years since I felt hyped for the next Call of Duty game, and I think it's because while I grew up, games like Halo and Call of Duty never did. The storytelling in Halo has always been good, but it never got better beyond the storytelling of Halo Reach, the last game that Bungie made before moving on to make Destiny. And while I say that they never grew up, I'm not saying that it became immature to me, or that I outgrew it and developed a better sense of taste. No, I'm saying that Halo and games like Halo refused to change beyond what they were. They were afraid to take risks like they used to. Remember when Bungie made the decision to end their game with no resolution in Halo 2? That pissed off so many people, but guess what? It worked. That cliffhanger made Halo 3 feel so much bigger, made it feel like this was really it, that after three games, the Chief's story would come to a close. We know now it didn't with the 343 trilogy still being made, but at the time, this was going to be it for the Chief. In a way, if you wanted to make a modern day comparison, Halo 2 was Halo's Infinity War, and Halo 3 was Halo's version of Endgame. At the time, the stakes and the emotions could have never been higher for fans of the series. But risks like that aren't being taken anymore. Halo 4 used the same plot point with Cortana deteriorating like she was in Halo 3, and Halo 5 tried to bring in new main characters that were rejected wholeheartedly by the community. But those weren't really risks, they were retreads of stuff that had already been done before and done much better. If you look at other games, remember when Call of Duty dropped the nuke? Or Battlefield made a weird comedy action FPS hybrid with the Bad Company games, where the original story was that a group of soldiers found out their enemies were being paid in gold, and that they were going to steal all of the gold so they could retire on an island somewhere with chicks and truckosauruses. When was the last time Call of Duty or Battlefield took a chance like that? Call of Duty didn't even have a campaign in the latest game, and Battlefield is too busy fighting with their fans to do anything risky. In a long-winded way, I guess I'm saying that I want Halo to surprise me. I want it to surprise me like it did all those years ago when I first played Halo CE as a child. More importantly, I want the FPS genre to surprise me. And if you've made it to the end of this video, I don't see how you could disagree with me. You may disagree with some of my points, but I find it hard to believe that if you love Halo, or FPS games in general, you wouldn't want to see Halo do something amazingly different like it did when it first came out. This has been Mongo PSR. See you next time.